This tutorial looks at the electrolysis of aqueous solutions and in particular three of them dilute sulfuric acid, dilute sodium hydroxide solution and copper sulfate solution. We're going to start by looking at the electrolysis of sulfuric acid and of sodium hydroxide both of which make the same products hydrogen at the cathode, oxygen at the anode uh, you also at higher level need to know the equations at each of these electrodes. This classic apparatus for the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid is called Hoffman's voltameter. You've got two electrodes, a positive electrode which is called an anode and a negative electrode called a cathode connected up to the power supply. When the electricity flows we get hydrogen forming at the cathode and we get oxygen forming at the anode. Notice how there's a difference in the volume. At the uh, cathode we get double the volume of hydrogen as we do oxygen at the anode. Electrolysis is done using platinum electrodes. Uh, you can use carbon ones as an alternative. It's because they don't get involved in the electrolysis. They don't corrode in the acid uh, and again notice the two products hydrogen at the cathode, oxygen at the anode in the ratio of 2 to 1. In dilute sulfuric acid we have sulfuric acid dissolved in water. The sulfuric acid formula H2SO4 splits up into two ions, the hydrogen ions 2H pluses and the sulfate ion SO4 2 minus. When the acid is dissolved in the water some of the water also splits up into ions H plus ions and OH minus ions. The positive ions will migrate towards the cathode, the negative electrode, whereas the negative ions will migrate towards the anode, the positive electrode. This movement of ions in order to carry charge is called electrolysis. Electrolysis will only work, remember, where the ions are able to move in either solutions in water or in molten salts. Remember that two ions have migrated towards the anode. They are the hydroxide ion OH- and the sulfate ion SO42-. Only one of these gets involved in electrolysis and the reasons for this are quite complex. However, four hydroxide ions, and here the magic number is definitely four, four hydroxide ions each lose an electron, so a total of four electrons, to make two molecules of water and one molecule of oxygen gas which bubbles off. In terms of the positive ions there are only hydrogen ions in the mixture. So these hydrogen ions make their way to the negative electrode, the cathode, where each of them gain one electron, but because the hydrogen ions can't exist as hydrogen atoms on their own, two hydrogen atoms join together to make a hydrogen molecule. So two hydrogen ions require two electrons from the circuit to make hydrogen gas. Now let's try and explain why there was twice the volume of hydrogen than there was of oxygen made in the voltameter. This happens because although at one electrode here at the anode four electrons are being given away here, only two are being taken up. So in order to balance the number of electrons, this second equation, in reality, would be doubled. What we'd really have, I suppose, would be four H pluses and four electrons making two molecules of hydrogen to every one molecule of oxygen. Hence, because a mole of any gas occupies the same volume, we've got double the volume of hydrogen because we've got double the number of moles of hydrogen being produced. The second solution we must look at is sodium hydroxide solution, summarized on this diagram here. During the electrolysis of sodium hydroxide solution, using, again, inert electrodes so they don't get involved in electrolysis and don't corrode in this uh, alkaline solution, we get the same two products. We get hydrogen at the cathode and oxygen at the anode and again in a ratio of two moles to one. In this electrolysis the ions present 
are the sodium ion and the hydroxide ion from the sodium hydroxide and the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion from the water. Again, positive ions will migrate towards the cathode, the negative electrode. Negative ions will migrate towards the anode, the positive electrode. As for negative ions, there are only one kind. There's only hydroxide ions. So these make their way to the anode where, again, four of them each lose an electron. So lose a total of four electrons and make two molecules of water and a molecule of oxygen gas. At the cathode, there would be two ions migrating towards this negative electrode. There would be the sodium ions and the hydrogen ions. Sodium ions can't be discharged at the cathode here because there's water present. So any sodium ions would make sodium metal which would immediately react with the water. Sodium is too reactive to get involved in electrolysis. So hydrogen ions are discharged instead. Here again, two hydrogen ions each approach the cathode. Each gain an electron. The hydrogen atoms then join together to make a hydrogen molecule. Once again, explanation of why there is twice as much hydrogen as there is oxygen at the electrodes. This is because here at the anode, four electrons are uh, being given away. But at the cathode, only two. So in order to balance the number of electrons, four hydrogen ions will each gain those four electrons to make two molecules of hydrogen. And again, because the volume of a mole of any gas is the same, we'll get twice as many moles of hydrogen as oxygen, so we'll also get twice as much volume of hydrogen as oxygen. Before we look at our last example, let's just recap those key words. The positive electrode is called the anode. The negative electrode is the cathode. The solution that we are electrolyzing is called the electrolyte. And by definition, electrolysis is the flow of charge by moving ions and the discharge of ions at the electrodes. Our third and final solution that we have to know about the electrolysis of is copper sulfate solution. Note, however, that this is done here with inert carbon electrodes. We met the electrolysis of copper sulfate solution once before uh, in C2 when we looked at the purification of copper. And here it was done with copper electrodes. When that was done, the anode dissolved into the solution and those ions then deposited on the cathode. Here, however, copper is formed at the cathode, as before, but oxygen at the anode. The apparatus for this electrolysis would look a little like this. Blue copper sulfate solution with two carbon electrodes connected up to the power supply, direct current of course. In the electrolysis of copper 2 sulfate solution there will be four ions present. The copper sulfate, CuSO4, will have the Cu2+, plus and the SO4 2 minus ions, whereas from the water we'll get some H plus and OH minus ions. As before, the positive ions will migrate towards the negative cathode, whereas the negative ions migrate towards the positive anode. As before, there's a kind of competition between the ions to see which one will become discharged. Copper ions rather than hydrogen ions are discharged at the cathode, Hydroxide ions rather than sulfate ions discharged at the anode. You just have to remember this. The reasoning behind it is quite complex. So the hydroxide ions at the anode, we have this very familiar by now equation where four hydroxide ions each lose an electron to make two molecules of water and one molecule of oxygen gas, so oxygen is discharged at the anode. Whereas at the cathode, remember it's the copper ions rather than the hydrogen ions here which are discharged. The copper ions each gain two electrons from the circuit to form copper atoms which deposit onto that uh, negative cathode.